In this video, I'll be talking about the many advantages of controlling stage noise in your worship space. These tips will improve the acoustics in your auditorium and the performance of your worship band. Thanks for checking out Church Media Pro. My name is Aaron Ward. If you're a Church Media Pro like myself, a media volunteer at your church, or just getting started in the world of church media, make sure to introduce yourself in the comments and click the subscribe button to be a part of the Church Media Pro community. If you're a church that has a modern worship band, your instrumentation will look similar to ours. One to four vocalists, an electric guitar or two, an acoustic guitar, a keyboard, a bass guitar, and a drum kit. Though this is a classic rock band setup, most of us don't have worship in a large stadium rock venue. Though we love reasonably loud music, in order to create the best mix possible for the house, we need practical ways to manage our stage volume. Let's start with likely the loudest acoustic source on your stage, the drum kit. There are a couple ways you can tackle this instrument that is literally engineered to be as loud and resonant as possible. The first way to handle the noise is to cut it all together with an electric kit. Before I lose all the drummers watching right now, let me ask you, when is the last time you sat down at a truly modern electric kit? I agree that nothing completely replaces the experience of real drum shells, but how cool is it to be able to choose from amazingly perfect drum tones and eliminate the need for expensive microphones and perfect mic placement? For those of you who have a little more space in your auditorium and a large enough stage, drum shields and houses are probably the most common solution. There are some great tutorials, some of which I'll mention in the description, on how to build them small and unobtrusive or large and nearly soundproof. The second largest source of extra noise on your stage is probably another thing your church has in common with a 70s era rock venue that it probably shouldn't, and I'm not talking about a gong. Of course, I'm talking about monitor speakers. If you're not the sound guy at your church, you probably don't realize how tough it can be to create a balanced house mix with so much bleed from your stage monitors. To get a feel for how much noise stage monitors add to the overall volume of the auditorium, completely turn down your mains and just listen for a couple of minutes. If your church isn't using in-ear monitors, your band is missing out on opportunities to be more cohesive, sound better, and maybe even save their eardrums. Switching to in-ears not only cuts down on significant stage noise, but it keeps the congregation from hearing things like click tracks, guide tracks, and music directors. Click tracks can take some time to get used to if your band has never used them before, but open up so many opportunities. The most obvious is keeping your band in time, which always makes them sound better. But beyond that, when adding a click, you can also typically add multi-track audio to play along with your band. If you're playing any modern worship songs from Hillsong, Elevation, or the like, you can purchase tracks that can help your band sound more like the record and help fill in sonically, especially if you don't have a great keyboard player. Another great opportunity to take advantage of if your band is playing to a click is to generate the click from a source like Ableton Live or Apple's main stage, both of which give you the capability of sending MIDI notes to your lyrics computer so you can automate lyric slide changes. No longer does your band need to rely on a pro presenter volunteer to make the correct slide changes during a worship set, which takes significant stress off of everyone. It's even possible to get creative with automated lighting and video switch cues triggered by song-specific MIDI data. There's another simple way to keep your band playing cohesively, especially during transitions or when vamping behind a sermon or prayer. Add a microphone to a band leader who can call out chord changes and send the signal to the in-ears instead of to the house. Seriously, it's a game changer. Limiting noise from drums and stage monitors will drastically change your house mix. You'll be able to mix in more kick drum, snare, and tracks. But there's another source that can limit, if not eliminate, especially if your band is using in-ear monitors. Talk to most guitar players for more than a couple minutes and they'll indefinitely bring up the subject of tone and how amplifiers crucially affect that tone. Here are my tips on limiting and possibly eliminating guitar amps altogether. First, the best compromise for those guitarists that won't part with their expensive guitar rigs, build a sizable box out of three quarter plywood big enough to fit the amplifier and a mic or two. Line it with egg crate or thick sound deadening foam and mount power and XLR cable outlets so you can keep the box as closed as possible. Now place that box off stage somewhere out of the way and pick up a transmitter receiver pair of SGI boxes from radio so you can transmit the instrument level signal from your guitarist pedal board a long distance over XLR to the amp isolation box. The second way to further eliminate amp noise is to provide your guitarist with either a Helix from Line 6 or amp emulation software like Sunday Guitar from Sunday Sounds. Some guitarists won't want to switch, 
but if you provide them the opportunity to try these solutions or explain to them the benefits of using these solutions, you'll clean up your house mix even further. Also, if you're not already using a direct box for your bassist, I highly recommend it. Amp tone may be a tough thing for an electric guitarist to give up, but most bassists aren't as enamored with their amplification and will typically give up control to the sound tech without much argument. By cutting or eliminating stage noise, you won't only have a much better mix in the house, but you'll be able to mix better for record and broadcast feeds. Please let me know in the comments of advantages you've seen and struggles you've encountered implementing these solutions. Links to all the gear I talk about in this video are in the description. And please don't hesitate to ask questions as well. I'm here to help you and your team become better church media pros. Before clicking to the next video, please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new Church Media Pro videos and join our Facebook group, Church Media Pro Group. Also make sure to reach out next time your church is remodeling or upgrading media gear and ask about my headache and budget savings consultation guarantee. Thanks for watching.